Hello, Blake Grudis here with F64 Academy and F64 Elite, and today I'm gonna to give you five tips using the Clone Stamp tool that will have you using the Clone Stamp tool like a pro in no time. This image here, I cloned this entire image out so I can remove all the cars and all the people using just the Clone Stamp tool, and look at that. All of the data is available in this image. Let's jump in, I'm gonna give you five very practical tips for using the Clone Stamp tool. In today's tutorial, I wanna give you five very practical tips for using the Clone Stamp tool like a pro in Photoshop. Now, all this information comes from a brand new course I've created called Photoshop Foundations Cleanup Tools, which will teach you not only the Clone Stamp tool, but every one of the cleanup tools that I use in Photoshop, from the patch tool to custom selections to the Adobe Camera Raw spot removal tool, all the way into things like the healing brushes and the spot healing brushes and content aware fill, it is packed with very good information on cleaning up your images. This image is also one that I showed in there. And in that tutorial, I showed how to successfully remove a lot of these cars and people. I went so far as to remove all of the cars and all of the people in some of my free time and my downtime to prove that all of the information that you need to get rid of all that stuff is in this photograph. Everything, this isn't a separate photograph. This is the photo that I've used to select certain areas of it to clone out other areas in the image. So I'm gonna go ahead and just minimize this. If you'd like to download this, you are free to download this image. If you're on the YouTube channel, it's gonna be in the little card, that little I card up there at the top. If you are on Facebook, it'll be in the description. And if you are on the F64 Academy page, it's gonna be in a little button. So you can download this image and you can play right along with me. So first and foremost, when you click on this clone stamp tool, my first tip that I'm gonna give you is keep it simple. Keep it really simple. Up here, it's just telling you that your brush is gonna be a soft edge brush, which I typically use a soft brush with a hardness of zero. That way we don't get any hard edges when we're making our clone stamp. The next thing, these are just some of the brush settings that you could change, but keep it simple. Don't worry about that. The mode, keep it at normal, opacity 100, flow 100. With these settings set like this, it's gonna take exactly what you take from one area and put it on the other. The second tip, and this is a really important one, is always make sure that you're doing your cloning on another layer. So we have right here, this is set to current layer, all layers, or current and below. We're gonna set this to current and below, and within this second tip, we're gonna open up a new layer down here, and we're gonna double click and call this clone stamp, or clone stamps, or stamps, or clones, or whatever you wanna call it. With this set to current and below, it's gonna take this current layer and all the other layers below it, and use that information in that layer right there to make your cloning. The third tip I have for you is find like areas in your photograph. So I'm gonna zoom into this car here. So if we look at this car and we look at this car, we wanna get rid of this car specifically right now. Look at this little black line in the road. I'm gonna press my move tool. Look at this black line that goes right down here in the image, okay? I need to use parts and pieces of that black line to cover up this car. Because if I don't, the viewer is gonna be able to tell. If I were to just come over here and I'm gonna press right bracket to make my brush a little bit bigger, press Alt or Option to use this area as my anchor point. And if I were to just start painting this in, notice how when we zoom out, that line is now missing, okay? So what we need to do is I'm just gonna go ahead and go back a little bit in my history. What we need to do is grab from areas that are going to look like that line. So I'll just click right there and just start cleaning up this car. Um, if I have to, I'll press Alt or Option to get that anchor point re-anchored and just start cleaning that up again, okay? Just brush it around now. And if we go a little too far because I picked up this line down here, that's okay. We can just Alt or Option, anchor this, and go back over it, okay? Short and choppy. Notice how I'm clicking. I'm, I'm doing several different clicks. I'm not just clicking and painting around because that's gonna do some really funky things. I'm pressing Alt or Option, being very deliberate about my anchor points and being very deliberate about where I place them. So now let's zoom out and you see that that car successfully is gone and we have that line that we're seeing all the way down this road continue up. 
on another line here, if we come over here, we zoom into this area, the same thing is going to happen if we want to get rid of people in this crosswalk. I need to use like areas to fill these people in. I can't just come over here, press Alt or Option Anchor over here and paint these people out. Why? Because now we have a crosswalk that's missing paint, okay? I've got to be very deliberate about where I pull from. So I'm going to press Alt or Option and I'm going to click on this one right here. And I'm going to use, you see how I have a preview of that? That's telling me that I'm going to be not only selecting that one little point right there, but I'm going to be selecting a lot of it. So I'm going to press left bracket key to make my brush really small. And now I can be really deliberate about where I want and what I want to use to cover up the people in this crosswalk. I can use this, the bottom of this crosswalk right here to cover this area up right here and get them people covered up. Okay. And take this, just pulling from different areas that look very similar. And then I'll grab this, this edge right here and paint that edge in along this crosswalk to get it to match up. Then I might grab from here, paint that area out. Every time I need to resample an area, I press Alt or Option and I anchor on another area and grab from it. Okay. If we want to make sure we're really good about it, though, we press Alt or Option, click right here and go up there like that. Okay. And if we get a little bit of overspray with our little spray paint here, Alt or Option, and just go over it. Just select other like areas to get rid of it. And now our people are gone there, and so is that car. The fourth tip I have for you is kind of along the same lines of find like areas, but while you do that, avoid repeating patterns. Repeating patterns are, are going to be the one thing that people are going to pick up on when they see you using the clone stamp tool. So let's say I want to get rid of this person right here. And I press Alt or Option and I click from this area right here within this photo and I start painting in and getting rid of that person. And then I'll press Alt or Option right here and start painting in. It seems innocent, but if you notice what I did there was because this area that I initially pulled from had that white speck in it, it transcended down my image into other areas because of where I was pulling the clone stamp from. Now, do you need to go all the way back and fix that up? Not necessarily, but if I make my brush a little bit smaller, I can just press Alt or Option and anchor it right here and just cover up those repeating pattern spots. Always break up repeating patterns. You can't avoid them, but you can break them up. Now, initially, if I, did, if I wanted to avoid that altogether, I could have just broken that pattern to begin with and you never would have seen it. Now with something like this, with that little white speck, that was uh, kind of difficult to be able to, to point out from a viewer that's seeing this because it just looks like maybe a piece of trash that could have been on that railing. But when my wife and I were getting married, the photographer that we were using, he was telling me about how his wife was really good with the clone stamp tool in Photoshop. And he was showing me the album. He's like, can you really spot where she used it? And I said, yeah. He said, where? No one's ever been able to pick that out. I said, that chair has seven legs. <laughs> what chair do you know of that has seven legs? So the rest of the cloned image looked great. She was cloning out people that were hanging over into the aisle taking pictures while the photographer was trying to get the bride going down the aisle. But the chair had seven legs. So not very easy to pick out, but someone who's pretty good, has a pretty good sharp eye, will be able to tell uh, where you're using repeated patterns. The fifth and final thing that I've got for you is don't be afraid to use two clone stamp layers. And there's a big advantage to having multiple clone stamped layers for your uh, clone stamping. So if I go ahead and make a new layer here, I'm going to show you what it would be like if I took this light pole and moved it over and made another one right here. Just make, let's say I want more light in that street, okay? I'm going to call this light pole. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom in right here. And when I press Alt or Option and select the top of this light pole, and maybe make my brush a little bit bigger and I start painting in, you'll notice that I probably am not going to be very good at lining it up, right? So look at the, the line right here in the concrete and look at the line right here in the concrete. Not very well done. But because this is on its own layer, I can do all kinds of things with it. I can move it around and I can get it exactly where I want it to be right there. If I need to press the up or down arrows to nudge it, I can. And it's nudged perfectly right where it needs to be to follow along that line. Now you might be thinking, well, there's a big old overspray of a different color of that concrete than there is on this one. And you're right. But because it's on its own layer, I can make a curves adjustment layer, press Alt or Option to clip it in and make that darker and make it blend 
right in with the rest of the background there. I could get really tedious about this. I could even change the color of it by changing the color channels of that curve and really get this to blend in very well with its surroundings. So well that you wouldn't really be able to tell unless you were looking really, really hard. So just to recap the things that we talked about, number one, keep it very stinking simple okay don't get over convoluted with this you make good anchor points on the areas in your image and you do it with a soft edge brush and your life is going to be really really easy okay don't worry about using creative and clever brushes just use a soft round brush number two always do your clone stamping on a separate layer typically right after you come in from adobe camera Raw or lightroom and you want to do more post-production afterwards Number three, find like areas in your image and use those as the source material to cover up and clone the things that you want to clone. Number four, and this is a big one, avoid any repeating patterns. Okay, don't, don't have anything that's gonna look like the exact same thing from another spot in your image. If that means you have to pull from somewhere way far away in your image in order to cover it up, go ahead and do so. That's better than pulling from somewhere that's too close in color or pattern that, to the area that you're trying to clone. And number five, kind of circling back to number two, don't be afraid to use multiple clone stamp layers so that you can use things like clipping masks and the ability to move that stamp around. As I said before, this all comes from a course called Photoshop Foundations Cleanup Tools that tells you not just how to use the clone stamp tool, but all kinds of cleanup tools in Photoshop. Don't be afraid to download this image. And if you like this, please comment on it, share it, tell a friend. And if you have the audacity or the ten tenacity, I should say, if you have the tenacity, take this image and try to get rid of everything like you saw me do at the beginning of this tutorial. Again, my name is Blake Rudis. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this and remember to subscribe.